Hey guys, Greg here. Today I want to introduce you to a piano player and composer that you probably are not that familiar with. His name is Frank Kimbrough, and I just received a review copy of this new release of his, and I thought to myself, who is this guy? Heard of him, but really wasn't familiar with him. Turns out he is one of the most critically acclaimed piano players and composers of the last few decades. Uh, but he's really a musician's musician. He's more well known by other musicians than, let's say, the general public. And he's not very well known amongst us vinyl collectors, partly because almost none of his uh, works were released on vinyl. Most of his stuff was released on CD only. So this marks uh, a significant major release for him on vinyl. I'll get into uh, this record specifically after I just tell you a little bit about Frank, the man himself. Unfortunately, he died just a couple years ago, I think age 64, 65. Uh, looks like it uh, was a sudden heart attack, so it was quite a shock and a surprise to everyone. Uh, Frank quite, left quite a mark on the world, especially the uh, East Coast music scene. He has a style that is very technically proficient, but emotionally expressive. A strong sense of melody, a deft light touch on the keyboard. We're listening to this now. You can hear what, what he's about. Um, vast array of influences in terms of piano players that he's either been compared to or, or is an influence on him. Uh, Bill Evans obviously comes to mind with a lot of people. He has influences and, and appreciation of, of later and more avant-garde and more uh, adventurous piano players. Paul Blay comes to mind. He actually recorded, and he thinks he's the only piano player who's ever recorded the complete compositions of Thelonious Monk. That's 70 compositions that came out a few years ago as a six CD set, massive, the complete Thelonious Monk. So Monk is certainly a big uh, influence on him. You're not gonna hear that in this piece necessarily. When you listen to this record, you're gonna hear different influences and different styles that he's all comfortable with. He's comfortable with all of them. Uh, so don't peg him as this style or that style. He he plays in a lot of styles. Uh, the other the other kind of obscure piano player that he's a little bit associated with is Herbie Nichols. And Herbie Nichols uh, was sort of from the bop, or I should say post-bop days, and uh, someone also who is often compared to Thelonious Monk and who passed away probably decades ago. Not very well known. Uh, but uh, Frank participated in something called the Herbie Nichols Project, which was a group of guys who were uh, playing and playing tribute to Herbie Nichols music. So a lot of disparate uh, influences and styles that you might not want to associate together, you might not be inclined to, but they go together because that's who, that's who Frank was. That's him. He, he embodied many styles, but really his own style. I wouldn't in any way say that he's trying to copy uh, any of these people. He's incorporating stuff into his own style. So I, I spent quite a bit of time listening to this new record. Have I even told you about the new record? There he is. Frank Kimbrough, 2003 to 2006. And what this is, it's really a re-release of two records that were previously only available on CD. And the two records are called Lulla Blue By from 03 and Play, which came out later. Did I mention this is a four LP set? That's massive. Have you ever seen a spine this thick on a record? Uh, it's not easy to review or even comprehend a four disc set because it takes several days and you can't even remember what you listened to three or four days ago. Very pleasantly surprised. I spent quite a lot of time listening to this record and some of his earlier stuff. Let me turn it up just a little bit. Hopefully I won't get a copyright ding because I'm trying to share this great music with you guys. Let me go over, go over a couple of other sort of things in his uh, career that you might uh, want to be aware of. He uh, spent a lot of time with a group called the Jazz Composers Collective, which I believe is based out of New York. And I believe the bass player who plays on uh, some of this is uh, Ben Allison, who's the co-creator of that a group of guys in New York, promoting the work of emerging jazz composers, including Frank. Uh, Frank is actually very well known for playing with the Maria Schneider Big Band. And Maria Schneider has been winning 
a lot of awards, a lot of critical acclaim the last few years for her, her, uh, her compositions and her big band records. But Frank, as a great a composer he is, I don't think Marie Schneider recorded any of his tunes. She is a composer in her own right and records mostly her own tunes. I'm turning it down just a little bit. You might hear a little bit of a monk influence on this tune. Again, massive double, double, double release. Four records. My only little criticism here is these four records are packaged in paper only. I'm going to have to go and uh, place them, those sleeves with my own plastic sleeves, which I usually do on decent records, but that's okay. So Frank was also an educator. Uh, I think he went he either went to Juilliard or he was a teacher at Juilliard. I think he was a teacher at Juilliard. There's very few interviews of him available uh, online anywhere, but I did watch a couple of them. Him interacting with students, uh, talking about soloing. And, and uh, if you listen to some of his interviews or read some of his interviews, you'll see that he had a fairly unique approach to learning music and playing music. One of the things he mentioned was that he never had his musicians rehearse before a gig. Uh, the logic behind that was, these guys are professionals. I give them the set list or I put the sheet music in front of them. They can play whatever music, whatever instrument they want if they are a multi-instrumentalist. And I trust them. I play with people that I trust. That's an unusual uh, uh, approach. Most band leaders are known as being control freaks and want to do every, want you to do everything just so. So, kind of a free-flowing, uh, free-spirit guy if he has that attitude. Uh, Similar stories with Marie, Sch Marie Schneider, who had come to him and asked for uh, his help on uh, putting together compositions and asking for directions. And he, he was the same attitude, like, hey, the musicians will figure it out. Don't sweat it. Don't overthink it. Um, refreshing style, refreshing attitude and philosophy towards music. I hope you guys uh, give it a listen. Check it out. You can listen to it online. It is available on Apple Music, uh, which is probably other formats, but uh, I did listen to some of it on Apple Music and I've listened to all of it on two or three different turntables. And uh, you're getting a, f a flavor for what it's like. Oh, oh, other important thing I forgot to mention. Okay, I did mention there's two different, two different albums really combined into one album, first time released on vinyl. Uh, two different bands. The second band, uh, contains the most recognizable name of anybody he's playing with here, which is Paul Motion. Paul Motion, who just died a couple years ago. The great, great drummer from the original Bill Evans trio. And there's a documentary that just came out about Paul Motion, and Frank actually was one of the musicians who uh, got to speak about Paul Motion on that one. But both of these records are a trio format. The first one, uh, Frank on piano, obviously, Ben Allison on bass, who I mentioned, Matt Wilson on drums, recorded in 2003. And the second album, called Play, Paul Motion on drums, Masa Kamaguchi on bass, who I'm not familiar with. That's it, guys. Check out Frank Kimbrough, the double, double record release, out on Palmetto Records. First time out on vinyl about the only thing you're going to be able to find on vinyl. And uh, I kind of questioned the wisdom of putting out such an expensive vinyl set. How would that appeal to new listeners? Like, how am I, gonna, how am I going to uh, invest in four discs on somebody I don't know much about? Turns out it's very reasonably priced. Four discs I've seen online for between $49, $59, That's not bad for four records. That's actually really good for four records when you realize that most records are coming out at 25 to 30 bucks a disc. Thanks for watching, and uh, keep the vinyl spinning. Let me know what you think, and let me know if you have any uh, opinion or experience with Frank Kimbrough, and we will catch you soon. Bye-bye.